Hey buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis. Kilbin is the name and Hearthstone is the game. And this is part three of my Mean Streets of Gadgets and Card Review. This time around I have a couple new Legendary cards, some Priest cards, I think a Warrior card. Uh, but a lot of cool stuff to see. So let's jump right in, starting off with one of the new Legendary cards that has been revealed so far. This is Finja the Flying Star. That's right, it's a Murloc Ninja. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. We have reached the pinnacle of Hearthstone as far as I'm concerned. Uh, not only is he a Murloc Ninja, but he's holding Swordfish as swords. This is the epitome of existence as we know it. Unfortunately for Finja, I don't actually think as a card he's all that good. This is a 5 mana Murloc, which is first off very expensive for a Murloc. We haven't seen a lot of Murlocs anywhere near this cost. Uh, he's also a 2-4 body, uh, which is obviously very low for a 5 cost minion. But he does have an effect both stealth and whenever he attacks and kills a minion, it summons 2 Murlocs from your deck. So the idea is you play this for 5 mana, he's stealthed. So there's a very good likelihood he's going to survive to the next turn. Then he gets to attack and kill something, and he summons two more Murlocs to join the party. Hopefully something like a Murloc War Leader, or perhaps even two Murloc War Leaders for some sort of like crazy big board. Uh, of course, you could also get like charging Murlocs. This could fit perhaps best in an anything can happen Paladin Murloc deck uh, because he's a mid cost, mid range card, which means. Uh, can't be in a super hyper aggressive Murloc deck probably just because he's a little too slow. But right now anything can happen. Paladin is kind of the only slow Murloc variant we know of. So since this is more of a mid-range, almost control style card, it might fit there. But even then I'm not really sure it's that good because usually by the time turn 5 comes around, a 2 attack minion doesn't always kill something. There's not always a two health guy laying around. Yeah, of course, you could send a fireball into something seven health and send in Finja to sacrifice himself, and uh, that would get the killing blow and seemingly activate this effect. There's also perhaps the theory that this is good to counter more aggressive decks that play a lot of small minions in the early game. You played this guy in the mid game, and he helps you catch up and stabilize your side of the board by pulling some Murlocs out of your deck. Now there's no doubt that if you do get the attack off, that the penalty and stats you take by playing a 2-4 is, is worth it, just because you get to not only draw two cards from your deck, but instantly put those into play, so there's a chance to get like six mana worth of instant value from some Murloc War Leaders, for instance, meaning uh, for five mana you get two three mana cards and a 2-4 body, uh, which also has a lot of internal synergies. So yeah, of course the effect is good when it works. I'm just mostly concerned that it's going to be hard to pull off, particularly at this mana cost. And I don't really know what kind of deck it fits into outside of one very specific one. So as a general card, I don't know that Finja the Flying Star is all that good or all that playable. He feels just a little too mishmash to me, and I, I don't see a immediate obvious home for this guy which is unfortunate because he's got an awfully cool fantasy and a pretty fun design at that. All that said, let's move on to our next legendary minion. Uh, it's another neutral one. This time it's Patches the Pirate, a one mana, one one that has a lot of eye patches, seemingly leading to the name Patches the Pirate. And he has charge and the effect that whenever you play a pirate, you summon this minion from your deck. So I think Patches the Pirate is probably an auto-include in any kind of pirate-based deck, essentially just because he's a free summon in the early game. This is a really cool effect. Anytime you play a pirate, he's coming onto the board. And usually you're going to be playing pirate in the first couple turns if you're playing a pirate deck at all. So uh, no matter which pirate it is, you're going to get an extra 1-1 one, one body in the early game. And a lot of people say, well, it's just a 1-1, one, one. like, who cares? It's not going to make that big of an impact. But a charging 1-1 one, one in the early game can be surprisingly important for establishing board presence and making really fun, uh, efficient trades. So don't underestimate that. Also, it has a side benefit of just thinning out your deck. Uh, 
it's a free card to include that makes your deck 29 cards deep instead of 30, which makes you all the slightly more likely to draw into your good cards you're looking for or specific things. Uh, so that has some side benefits as well. Uh, that said, nothing about this card feels particularly broken or crazy or overpowered. I don't think by any means it's good enough to make pirate decks a thing on its own. So I'm not sure it's going to encourage an all-new archetype. But there are some pirate decks around. Pirate Warrior in particular seems to be playable on the ladder. So I do think this card will be played anytime pirates become a thing. Just not sure that it's strong enough in and of itself to make pirates a thing. All that said, it's probably not a card you're going to go look to craft specifically, but you probably shouldn't be too upset if you get it in a pack, because it might just mean you get to play pirates and have a pretty fun card that does some cool stuff on your side. So, um, fine card, good, not amazing. That said, let's move on to the class cards in this review. And we got a lot of priest cards to look at in particular, starting off with the six mana potion, Dragon Fire Potion. Uh, epic quality card, deal five damage to all minions except dragons. So this is basically Ysera Awakens. Uh, much like Ysera Awakens deals five damage to everything except Ysera, uh, this does five damage to all minions except dragons. So it doesn't hit heroes like Ysera Awakens. It's obviously a little more expensive than Ysera Awakens, but a similar kind of uh, damage dealt and uh, preservation effect on a specific minion or minions in this case, uh, i.e. dragons. So obviously this is perfectly designed for Dragon Priest. A uh, similar card in the past for Dragon Priest was Light Bomb. Light Bomb dealt uh, damage to minions equal to those minions' attacks. So it was really good at clearing out big stuff with high attack values, like Giants at 8-8 or Dr. Boom at 7-7. This card will not do that. It will not kill 8-8 Arcane Giants. It wouldn't kill a theoretical Dr. Boom. So it's not quite as good as Light Bomb, I would argue. Uh, and Light Bomb still worked in Dragon decks because most of the early to mid game dragons had lower attack values than health values. So you could cast Light Bomb, it wouldn't really kill your dragons anyway. You could heal them up over time and just gain a really nice big board swing. This card is similar in many ways, but I think perhaps a little bit weaker in a lot of ways too. Uh, just because it doesn't kill as much stuff, and uh, the fact that it's not hurting your dragons isn't really all that important. It's nice, granted, to have a 3-6 a uh, Twilight Guardian instead of a 3-3 three, three Twilight Guardian that Light Bomb would have provided. That's clearly a benefit. There's a lot of playability in this card, even though it's not as good as Light Bomb. Light Bomb was amazing. Uh, and this is an AoE option that's better than Holy Nova. It's better than uh, Excavated Evil, which are similar cost cards, but don't deal with nearly as much stuff on the board. Uh, five health is a, an important breakpoint as far as minion health totals are concerned. A lot of stuff has five health, uh, three health from Excavated Evil, and two health from Holy Nova just don't do the job sometimes. And this one will. Uh, so in Dragon decks, it's going to be played. It's going to be good. It's going to be important. It's no Light Bomb, but it's still a very good card. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trashing it by any means. I think it's great. Uh, in fact, I think it might even be played outside of Dragon decks, <laughs> just as a sort of flame strike, right? Just because it doesn't kill dragons doesn't mean you have to run dragons to use it. Uh, this is a cheap flame strike. Often, Priest won't have anything on the board at all in the early to mid game. So playing this on turn 5 or turn 6 means they're just going to kill their opponent's stuff and stabilize the board. And the fact that it didn't hurt their own minions was irrelevant because they didn't have any minions anyway. So uh, even if you had stuff out that died to it, often a symmetrical board clear for Priest would still provide an advantage. So whether you've got stuff that dies to it, whether you've got dragons, or whether you've got a totally empty board, I still think this card is advantageous in all three of those instances and uh, will be an important area of effect board clear for a class that has actually lacked pretty substantially in that regard since uh, Light Bomb left standard format. Excavated Evil, Holy Nova just haven't cut it, and Dragonfire Potion's gonna fill in that gap. So, strong card all around. 
Moving on to uh, what I think is another good card. This time it's a five mana minion for Priest, the Draconid Operative. Uh, this is a five six minion for five, which um, don't underestimate the importance of that stat allocation. That's really good. Five fives are probably the most common body in Hearthstone right now. There's just so many five five minions, or at least stuff with five health. Uh, that don't do six damage so this minion's going to trade very favorably into a lot of things and there's a surprising number of things that do four or five damage as well so it's going to be a little hard to kill for some classes too so the the minion value itself here is above average this is a good five six body for five mana and it's a dragon so it's got a lot of dragon synergy potential so clearly uh, between the Dragonfire Potion and the Draconid Operative. Uh, Blizzard is really still diving into Dragon Priest as an archetype, which is fine. It's It's been around for a long time, and it's nearly been very good for a long time. So these kinds of cards could certainly push Dragon Priest over the edge towards uh, greatness. All that said, I haven't even talked about the Battle Cry yet, which is also really, really good. If you're holding a dragon, discover a card in your opponent's deck. That's awesome. So this is a, a five mana five six that's a draw card. So compare that to something like Azerdrake, which is a five mana four four draw card. Uh, it's it lines up really nicely with Azerdrake, right? You lose a little spell damage, granted, uh, but you won't need spell damage because you'll have Dragon Fire Potion. <laughs> so you won't need that spell damage, Excavated Evil or spell damage, Holy Nova. Uh, so that's fine. You gain a lot of stats and you get a discover effect. It's sometimes better than a draw card effect, particularly because it's coming from your opponent's deck. So it's giving you a couple things. It's giving you information. It's giving you access to sometimes strong legendaries or specific uh, answers or really um, specific minions or spells you might need in a given moment. So the ability to choose instead of just relying on random draw is very important because that influence on the decision uh, means you can react and, and have some flexibility and make smarter plays than uh, pure randomness would allow. So uh, discovering a, an opponent's card is awesome. You'll sometimes get those Tyrion Forge Rings or the Alexstrasza or just something you desperately need and it's going to be perfect. Um, so all around A plus card. It's going to be it's going to be played. It's going to be good. Uh, I will say that it's not like game breaking. It's not going to just define a deck or win games, but it's just a solid high value addition to dragon priest so i think it's going to be um, a nice card uh, moving on to the next one it's another potion this time the pint size potion a one mana spell and this one will give all enemy minions negative three attack this turn only so a couple implications here with this card, right? Right off the bat, um, when you give things negative three attack, that often means you can set up favorable trades. So if you have a board and they have a board and you want to run your stuff into their stuff and you don't want your stuff to die, casting a pint sized potion first, of course, can help preserve the health totals of your minions when establishing those trades. So that's pretty powerful. Um, now that said, I don't know how often exactly that's gonna happen because for that to work, in essence, the priest has to have initiative on the board. In other words, you have to have played your minions first and then they have to have played their minions after, enabling you to have that attack phase because remember this only works this turn only. So it's not during their attack phase, it has to be during your attack phase when you still have minions alive to make trades. So you have to have uh, initiative on the board, which Priest doesn't always have and often doesn't have. Usually Priest is a little bit slower. That said, um, Dragon Priest can get off to some pretty fast starts with the Little Dragon and the Wormrest Agents and um, the new 3-drop that we're going to look at next. <laughs> so there's going to be some early game curve happening for Priest, it looks like, in the Mean Streets of Gadget Zan. So this might be more relevant now than it would have been in the past. Uh, the second application of this spell is with the stealing effects that Priest has access to with low attack value minions, specifically Cabal Shadow Priest, that can steal a two or less attack minion from your opponent's side of the board. 
Uh, this card allows you to do that very efficiently because it's only one mana. So for you know maybe on turn six or turn seven, you can actually get both your Cabal and your Pint-Sized Potion off and steal some cool stuff. Uh, plus, there are priest effects that do uh, clear enemy minions based on attack value. So you've got Shadow Word Pain, for instance, also um, Shadow Word Horror, both of which can kill low attack minions very efficiently. So this combos really nicely in particular with Horror, because it could be a cheap two card board clear for things that are like five attack. Uh, drop them all to two and just wipe your opponent's board. So this gives life to that card, gives extra value to Shadow Word Pain, which often in the late game can struggle to find minions to kill that are high value. So suddenly you can kill Ysera with Shadow Word Pain as long as you combine it with a Pint Size Potion. Also, you can steal Ysera with Pint Size Potion and a Cabal Shadow Priest. So it's clearly got applications. It's, it's certainly playable from a functional sense. Uh, that said, I don't actually know that this card will be played in a lot of Priest decks. The problem with one mana spells that don't cycle themselves, like Power Word Shield, for instance, is that they just can sometimes be dead cards in your hand, and uh, they thin out your deck with junk. Basically, you always have a chance of drawing a couple one-cost spells right in a row and don't get the meat that you need or the substance, and you're essentially lowering the quality of the average draw in your deck pretty substantially when it comes to mana cost and influence on the game. And Priest typically runs a more control style and a late game style, so it's going to be a risk to include a card like this relying on sort of those sneaky combos, like with Horror or Cabal Shadow Priest. Those are going to be inconsistent, and they're not always going to be something you want to steal at that point when you've got both the cards. So, yeah, it works. It can do cool stuff. But I think it's actually too inconsistent and won't do cool stuff often enough and will be dropped from play pretty quickly. So uh, an average card at best, maybe maybe above average slightly, uh, but I don't think it's a card that gets played much. Again, I'd love to be proven wrong because it's really fun and funny art and <laughs> cool, but uh, I think this one is not going to make the cut for most people. Let's move on to another Priest card. This time it's the Cabal Talon Priest. A three mana minion at uh, three, four. And this is pretty cool because it is essentially Dark Cultist 2.0. You might remember Dark Cultist from Nax Ramus. It was also a three mana, three, four that had a Death Rattle give him a friendly minion plus three health. Uh, or actually, maybe it was plus four health. I don't remember exactly, but... Um, Clearly a similar card in structure and design. Same stats, same cost. It's a battle cry instead of a death rattle. And you actively give a friendly minion plus three health on command instead of relying on that death rattle effect to do it. Now, a lot of people would say, oh, well, that's obviously better because you control it. It's, um, it's instant and active. And yes, that's true. You do control which minion has it and... You control when it happens, specifically, which you didn't have as nearly as much control over with Dark Cultist. The problem, of course, is that um, you have to have a minion on the board for this to work. So much like I was talking earlier, Priest can sometimes have difficulty getting initiative on the board. Sometimes you'll just be playing second and your opponent will be removing your stuff and you'll always be playing onto an empty board, playing catch up on the board. So a card like this doesn't work in that sense. Unless you have two minions to play at the same time, uh, if you have an empty board, this battle cry just goes dead. Uh, but Dark Cultist can kind of work in the reverse action, right? If you stick a Dark Cultist and it lives, you can play another minion and then trade the Dark Cultist and buff the new minion that you played. So it works in a reverse order. It's impossible to do that with Cabal Talon Priest, right? If you play Cabal Talon Priest, nothing else on the board, and you trade it in, nothing happens. You just lost the effect. So, yeah, in some ways it's better. In some ways it's actually maybe worse specifically for Priest. Plus, uh, you lose Death Rattle synergies, which are also a thing. So, uh, I think this is still a good card just because the stat allocation is nice. Trades really favorably into early game stuff, which Priest needs. Uh, if you are able to get that Worm Rest Agent out, it's going to be really powerful in that regard. So, uh, a good card just... Maybe don't go crazy thinking this is way better than Dark Cultist or the upgraded version of Dark Cultist because I'm not sure that it is. Uh, but also don't let that distract you from the fact that this is still a solid 
and playable card, and it's a mana slot and a minion size that Priest really needs. So I think it's going to see play. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next card, and that is another potion, actually. This time the Potion of Madness, another one mana spell. And essentially this is the baby version of Shadow Madness. Shadow Madness, of course, four mana spell. Uh, gain control of an enemy minion with three or less attack until the end of turn. And Shadow Madness is relatively good. It sees play pretty often from time to time. Uh, you can steal a minion, trade it in. Sometimes you can like steal the opponent's death rattle effect, kill two of their minions uh, with one stone. Like There's a lot of advantages of Shadow Madness. So it would lead one to believe that Potion of Madness is actually pretty good as well. It's a very similar effect, uh, just a slightly different attack value, uh, but significantly cheaper at one mana. So yeah, I, I get that uh, line of thought. It makes sense to me too. But unfortunately, I actually don't think Potion of Madness is very good. It suffers the same kinds of problems that Pint Size Potion had in regards to thinning out your deck and just your average draw not being powerful enough in Priest. Uh, so this is probably a much more early game kind of card, hoping to like kill two of their early game minions against really aggressive decks. But all that said, um, two attack minions just aren't as threatening as three attack minions. On average, there's not nearly as many really good two attack minions compared to a lot of really good three attack minions sometimes you'll get those water elementals those twilight guardians there's a lot of good stuff at three attack and there's just not that much at two or less so uh it's despite the cost difference and being much cheaper than shadow madness uh, i just don't think you're going to get as much out of this as you do with shadow madness and it doesn't fit the more late game oriented play of Priest either, whereas Shadow Madness certainly can. So I almost think I'd rather run Shadow Madness and perhaps just a pint sized potion than trying to squeeze in a couple potion of madnesses. Uh, unfortunately, we've seen a lot of really cheap Priest spells in the past kind of fail, particularly when they're sort of gimmicky with attack values. Stuff like Confuse, for instance, and there's probably three to five other uh, similar kinds of cheap Priest spells that just didn't go anywhere. And I think Potion of Madness and maybe even Pint Size Potion both are going to fall into that realm where they just don't get played a lot. Because really, really cheap priest spells outside of those that cycle themselves or have a really big impact on the board, i.e. Power Word Shield or Circle of Healing, uh, they just don't really do enough. And they thin out your deck too much, and that's why they always get weeded out of consideration when you're building a deck list. So I think Potion of Madness is probably... At a fundamental level, a pretty decent card and that it can make a big impact and have a, a valuable influence on the game uh, in the early game, but just maybe not perfect for Priest and uh, not an ideal fit. So let's move on to, uh, I think, the last card in this review, and it's the one Warrior class card that has been revealed so far, and that is another one-mana spell, clearly a theme for Blizzard this expansion. This time though it's called I Know A Guy. And as I mentioned with Power Word Shield, one mana cards that don't cycle themselves are bad, but one mana cards, spells that do cycle themselves can be good, and this is in fact a one mana spell that cycles itself into a new card. This time it's Discover A Taunt Minion. So you play this uh, and you get a new shiny taunt. Now, I haven't looked in depth just yet at all the taunt minions available in the game, uh, but there are some bad ones, and there are only a handful of really good ones. I'm afraid with this card that most of the time you're going to get probably a subpar set of options. Now you do get to choose from three, so there's probably a, a semi-decent chance most of the time something good will show up, but you know half the time that's going to be a fin creeper is your best option. Now, Fin Creeper in the right scenario can be a fine card, but you're not always going to get the Chill Maw or the Tyrion or the really big, nice taunt that you need, even the Sunwalker. A lot of times you're going to get uh, the little junky, cheap taunts, uh, the target dummies of the world, if you will, even though you won't get that one specifically in standard format. Or the Goldshar Footman, I should say. There's a lot of those too. So this is probably going to be a relatively inconsistent card. It was probably designed with Taunt Warrior in mind. We've seen a lot of Taunt Synergy cards hit that class over the last few expansions, but that's never really taken off as an archetype. That said, I still think this could fit. 
in certain sorts of control decks uh, that just want a taunt or flexibility in choosing a minion and having a cheap spell. Maybe an arcane giant warrior that wants a ton of spells and some late game survivability could use a card like this. Who knows? It's it's certainly not bad by any means at uh, base level. It's a fine cycle card. It's discover, which has typically been good in a very valuable keyword. So I think this probably gets played from here, uh, from time to time, from here to there. But I, I really think that people are going to be probably disappointed with the taunts that pop out of it uh, on average. So it may eventually get cut. So a fine card, but probably one that doesn't get played a ton. And that actually sums it up for all my cards. All in all, uh, a lot of cards that are fundamentally okay, but probably just don't get played. That fits Finja, Patches, uh, Pint Size Potion, and Potion of Madness, and I know a guy. I do think Cabal Talon Priest will be played quite a bit. I think Draconid Operative will be played quite a bit. And I think Dragonfire Potion will actually be played a ton by Pre. So at least there were a few highlights in this video. Uh, now that I've wrapped up, if you have any thoughts or comments of your own you'd like to share, please do leave them below. I'd love to read your take on these cards. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. And until next time, game on.